welcome back to the Techno Barbarian box truck build, everybody. If you're new here, I'm the Techno Barbarian, and I'm taking a 17-foot U-Haul and building a luxury tiny house inside of it. In this episode, we're going to be transforming the mom's attic, which is the part above the cab, into a capsule hotel-style sleeping quarters and bedroom. I don't know why I thought I could get this in there in one piece. I thought, you know what? Every once in a while, there's a little glitch in the universe where something just goes wrong. Maybe sometimes it'll just go right. Not today. I've got this in half. So, as you can see, unfortunately, we did not have any cosmic anomalies, which means that I had to cut the ceiling panel in half in order to get it into the bedroom area. So we're finally going to cover up the last of the ceiling in the van. And we're doing it with that 8th eighth, eighth inch plywood just to get a smooth surface so that we can attach our ceiling panels to later. Same situation with the walls here. We're just going to cover that with the 8th inch ply. Because OSB is not really a working finishable surface. For those who may not know, that box on the wall there is actually my AC ductwork. So all the hot air that exhausts out of the air conditioning unit gets pumped out through that duct up through the ceiling in the roof of the truck. making a little cubby unit shelving unit over on this side of the bedroom area just to cover up that ductwork but also add some extra utility for some storage room now the u-haul is about eight feet wide and i'm about six foot two so i definitely don't need the full width of the sleeping area to sleep comfortably so we're gonna make do with the space we got added some cubby units in here for a little extra storage So a lot of this surface back here is actually gonna be visible. So I'm going to provide a frame in the corners for the eventual shelves and also cover up those gaps in the corners and prepare the surface for paint later. I like this design for the cubbies. It's a 
design that I've seen in a lot of other vans, but also it's more of a round kind of organic shape as opposed to the rest of the van build, which largely is more geometric, hard angles, edges, corners, things like that. So it's going to add a nice little contrast for the eyes. Since we're using plywood, I'm going to go ahead and put some edge bending on the inside of this. I did not, I had no idea how this was going to turn out. I've never seen this actually done before, so this is me really just winging it. But edge banding is edge banding. It's pretty simple stuff. You heat it up, there's glue, and it sticks to the surface. So it can't be that hard to edge band the inside of a cubby hole. Keeping along with the kind of organic feel here, I'm going to use the same Bombay mahogany stain that I used on the floor of the bathroom. You guys can go back and watch that one if you didn't see me make my shower floor. It's basically a brown with a nice little tint of red in there as well. And this is the 2-in-1 poly shades. So it's not just a stain, but it's a poly built into the stain. And when you're using poly shades, you want to make sure and apply thin coats and multiple layers of thin coats. And you can probably tell by looking at this footage here that... Uh, well, I didn't really use thin coats. I really messed up on this one. And I ended up having to redo the finish on this panel three times. So I did I did three initial coats of this poly shades. Um, I installed it in the truck. I kept working. I went back. I looked at it. I kept looking at it. It was eaten away at the back of my mind. It kind of looked like trash. So I ripped it out, sanded the entire thing back down to bare wood. It's three layers of poly shades. I had to sand it off. Recode it again the proper way by doing one thin layer and then steel wool and then another thin layer and that eventually got me to the final product. So just a fair warning for you guys, if you want to use the poly shades, don't do what you do you see me do right there and just slather it on. It's those kind of mistakes that make these videos take two weeks to make. I mean, think about that. Every layer of that poly shades, I have to wait, you know, five, six hours for that to dry. And uh there was about 10 individual layers of poly shades over several days that had to be applied to that thing just to finish that one panel so you can start to get the idea of how tedious some of this stuff can get anyway moving on to the main feature of the bedroom here we need to make an accent wall i wanted to do something special flex a little bit of creativity here i didn't have any specific designs in mind when i went into this so this is really me just winging it i knew that I had some baseline requirements. And you guys heard me talk about baseline requirements before in some of my other videos, but it's a good way for me to establish a workflow and uh, get an end result without having any real solid ideas. So my, my baseline requirements were that I wanted multiple textures and I wanted geometric shapes and I wanted some lighting involved somewhere. So I decided to make a uh, asymmetric geometric pattern on the entire back wall with inlaid lighting and then the lit backlit part would actually shine up on uh, a what looks like anyway a textured wallpaper now the objective of the backlighting is to kind of create an illusion of depth and to achieve that i'm routing out a good portion of the frame the geometric frame here to inlay the lighting deeper in the frame itself. Not the easiest job to do with a little tiny router that I have. Definitely more of a job for a real man's router, the one that plugs into a wall and maybe has like an inch and a half wide bit and not a uh, three quarter inch wide bit. So 18 batteries later, we got everything routed out on this panel and we're ready to install it in the truck. But before we do that, we have to respect the order of operations. Of course, order of operations, another thing that I've talked about a lot. Before I can put the wall panel in, I have to put the ceiling in and I have to put the wallpaper in. So let's go ahead and get some wallpaper going. This one is actually adhesive wallpaper, but I'm adding some Gorilla Glue anyway, because I don't trust the adhesive that comes with it. This pattern is a little more generous in terms of mistakes and uh, 
lining it up opposed as opposed to the other wallpaper that I've got in the living room area. So this installation went a lot quicker. And with that wallpaper slapped up there, we can go ahead and move on to the ceiling panels. We're going to use luxury vinyl planks for these because I like to choose the most expensive possible materials I can, apparently. But this, these are gray luxury vinyl planks. They're very thin. They're flexible. They don't have all the extra added doohick, doohickeys on the bottom, you know, the extra padding and stuff like that. I want it to be thin because I need every millimeter of space that I can get up in this bedding area. And all we're doing with this is contact cement. Spray contact cement on the ceiling, spray contact cement on the tile, and stick them together. Rinse and repeat. At some point, we actually get something that starts to look kind of nice. A little glimmer of hope, you know, for that end product. It's what keeps me going through the uh, 105 degree heat, the cramped tight spaces, the, the sore back, all the mistakes and little corrections that I have to do that you guys don't see on camera. This is actually a lot harder than it looks, especially at, at some points, psychologically speaking, it doesn't ever feel like the truck's gonna be done. I've realized over the years that my personal disposition is kind of dependent on what the future outlook is at the moment and sometimes when it feels like the truck is never going to get done well that future outlook it's not that great and even outside the truck itself even during the filming of this video I, I lost some things that I was looking forward to and that does affect the psychology but still at the end of the day you got to get back up you got to get out there in that 105 degree heat you got to get ready to sweat 10 gallons got to get ready to get sticky Get glue all over yourself, inhale toxic chemicals, blood, sweat, and tears, baby. That's what technological barbarism is. You gotta, you gotta willingly walk into adversity. And that's the only way to create something beautiful, to create something that you're proud of. Philosophical musings aside, we've got our LED strips installed on the inside of the cubby panel and on the inside of our accent wall now. So we're gonna fasten the accent wall piece with some screws and get those covered up with some wood filler. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why does the accent wall start five inches up from the bottom of the floor? Well, it's because this is a bedroom and I'm going to be putting a four inch memory foam mattress to sleep on underneath the accent wall. I wanted the entire accent wall feature to be visible from the living area and from outside as well. So we're filling in the space underneath the accent feature with those luxury vinyl planks. And once again, we're going to be using the same Bombay Mahogany stain on this wall. And I'm actually going to be doing this one the right way. We're going to go thin layer. And then we're going to sand it down with the steel wool. And then we're going to put another thin layer on. So if you're looking at this as a how-to video, how to use the poly shades, and you want to get a good product, don't use the cubby panel as a model. Use this as your model. The only downside with this despite the fact that it is the recommended workflow from the product itself, is that the steel wool leaves quite a bit of glue that needs to be cleaned up before you put that second layer on. Otherwise, you'll have little steel wool shavings everywhere.
With that stain drying, we can move on to making some outside corner trim pieces to finish this bedroom. And what I've got here is a piece of the flooring and some stain that I've got that closely matches, but not perfectly, but it's close enough. And we have to make our own outside angle trim with this stain. So I'm just gonna apply the stain to these outside corner pieces, let that dry, and we're gonna use this to cut and finish out of the outside corners with later on. And while that stain is drying, we're gonna move on to some flat trim that I wanna to use to accent the inside of our geometric accent wall. That's right, it's an accent on our accent. And it was at this point in time that I realized, I think it's time for a new toy. Got a lot of finishing work coming up, not only in the bedroom, but in the rest of the truck as well. And I needed something that's gonna make that work easier for me with all the trim that I'm gonna to need to be cutting. So we made a purchase of a miter saw, which we promptly used to chop up all of our trim. Coating this with some gloss black enamel just to match the surface shine of the stained wall we've already got in the bedroom. And then we're going to be fastening it to the accent wall with some silicone. side I can paint it later this PVC trim that we put on here serves two purposes number one it's gonna clean up that edge make it look nice and uniform all the way across and straight the wood wasn't actually straight especially after I trimmed it with a jigsaw and then put it in two pieces second thing is that it's gonna reinforce this inner edge of that wood so I mean this is a sleeping area some people are more active sleepers. I know I am. I roll around a lot. There's gonna be some elbows hitting this wall and I don't want this edge to get cracked or something like that in the middle of the night. So reinforcement and aesthetics. These things are awesome. Now this wall and these lights should be running off of the inverter now instead of an extension cord. So With the installation of that black trim, our accent wall is actually finally fully complete. We can move on to the other walls in the bedroom. I decided to take a little bit of a different approach on this one. I wanted to try and assemble and build as much as of the wall as possible outside of the truck and then simply place it in the truck when all the hard work is done because Doing the fine cutting and finishing work that's required to make this is going to be just a major pain if I have to work in that confined space. So there are a few features that I really wanted to have on this wall. The first and most significant one is going to be kind of a charging station slash storage cubby for cell phones, tablets, somewhere you can put a book or your keys or your wallet or just the kind of stuff that you would have next in, on like a bedside table type situation. The second thing that we're going to be cutting and placing into this wall panel is a reading light. I wanted an adjustable, movable, dimmable reading light that I can use to not only light the room itself, but also that I can use to read a book when I'm laying in bed. The third and final feature that we're going to be cutting and adding to this is a actual handle to assist you in getting up and into the bed. So the objective here is to achieve as much of that as possible before doing anything in the truck. And we'll get most of the way there.
So these trim cuts right here are the kind of things that I really needed the miter saw for. And I, I could have done this stuff by hand, but it just wouldn't have been a major pain in the ass. And a lot of the angles wouldn't have lined up. It wouldn't have been as clean. This installation method worked quite well. I was able to get everything pre basically prefabbed and then just simply move it into the truck and fasten it in place. A little bit of wiring work and a few screws later we've got our reading light installed. And then we can move on to installing the actual flooring. It's time to get high. I mean, attach a wall with contact cement. We're gonna be covering over the AC duct wall with a flooring panel, and then simply cutting out that duct hole from the inside with our multi-tool. Nothing special going on on this wall. I may install a cup holder or something like that later, but for now, just a plain Jane wall. With that wall covered, we got basically all the major services uh, finished and ready for trim on the inside of the bedroom. So we got a lot of trim work to do. I'm gonna chop up a lot of inside corner trim, outside corner trim in preparation. This angle wall doohickey, whatever, I don't even know what this would be called, but this is uh, represented quite an intellectual challenge for me. I didn't know how to finish this, but I figured if I could cut it precisely enough, I could simply cut 45 degree angles on either side of the luxury vinyl planks. And as long as they're the right size, it would fit flush. And there'd be no gaps. So turns out that uh, with enough precision, I was able to get it down. And I think it turned out quite well. And finally time for the absolute worst part of this entire process, which was fastening all of the trim in place with silicone. I say it's the worst because the silicone ended up getting absolutely everywhere. And uh, silicone is notoriously difficult to clean up, especially if you let it dry, which in some cases I did let it dry because I simply didn't want to smear it all over the place on my nice finished walls. And then I have to go back in and kind of scrape it up after the fact.
There were a lot of strange angles and different joints that I had to work with at the top side of this where the surfaces came together and it didn't come out exactly perfectly I would say but it's satisfactory for something that you're really never even going to look at anyway. After reinstalling our roof hatch hardware, we are finally, thankfully, done with the bedroom. I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that I lived up to the hype? Do you think that I created a capsule hotel style bedroom in a U-Haul? What do you think about the aesthetics, the looks, the finishing, the colors? I want to hear it. Special shout out to all of my supporters over at technobarbarian.locals.com. That's my private community for van enthusiasts. If you guys enjoy van builds, you want to build your own, or you are building your own, you have questions, comments, you want to use me for consulting, feel free to hop on over there join up and with that said i'll see you guys on the next one and now i'm already obsessed with making sure it's completely polished <laughs> showroom ready there's a fingerprint get him